You're listening to the Small Business Talk podcast with Kathy Smith. Episode 12. Small Business Talk is a podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who want a better way to run their businesses without spending years doing it the hard way. Small Business Talk is hosted by Kathy Smith, who has run the same marketing agency for more than 17 years and helped hundreds of business owners achieve their marketing goals. Hey, I'm so glad you could join us. Imposter syndrome. What is it? Do you have it? What is the cure? Many small business owners have had or do have imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when you feel like you are not good enough. No matter what qualifications you have, or how many years experience you have. Imposter syndrome is common in many areas, especially if you have no formal training for the skills or services you perform, or where the training or qualifications have changed over the years. The graphic design industry is a classic example. 30 years ago, graphic design was a trade qualification. You did a four-year apprenticeship, where you worked under a qualified tradesman who had many years' experience. Then in your second to fourth years of your apprenticeship, you attended a technical college or a TAFE, where you had both technical and practical assessments. Now graphic design is a university degree. I was one of the last to go through the apprenticeship system before it changed. I have 25 years or thereabouts, of post-apprenticeship experience as a tradesman. However, I do not have a degree. So does that make me less qualified than somebody who has done a graphic arts or graphic design degree? I'll let you answer that question. Do I personally get imposter syndrome? Not so much these days. However, I used to. Do you have imposter syndrome? Do you feel like you are not good enough? You don't know enough. You don't have enough experience to teach, charge or offer whatever skill set it is that you have. Do you ever shy away when someone asks you at a party or a networking event what you do or what your qualifications are? If you answer yes to any of the above questions, you either have imposter syndrome or you have had imposter syndrome. So what is the cure? The very first thing you need to do is give yourself a break. Give yourself some credit. Are you helping people solve their problems with whatever it is that you offer? Yes, of course you are. There's your answer. Brendan Brochard says, stop asking if you belong and start asking if you're being of absolute service every day and I'd lay money on it, that you are. When my daughter was little, I only worked school hours. I would drop her off at school, then frantically drive home, get my team sorted, do any work that I needed to do urgently, and run off and see clients. I would need to be back in time to be waiting outside her classroom when the bell rang. The days that I had appointments, I would dress up. I would put on my work uniform and I would be very productive. I would see my clients and get everything done. On the days I didn't have appointments, I would wear casual clothes. And what I found was two things. By wearing casual clothes, my girlfriends would think I wasn't working that day. They'd asked if I wanted to go and have coffee, do some shopping or just come over and hang out. On the days I had my work uniform on, they'd say, Kathy, you're working today. Good luck with your appointments. Be great to catch up when the children are available. Hope your day goes well. The other thing I found, if I had my work clothes on, I was in work mode. I had a completely different mindset. I had to get my work done because it was a business day. I would not worry about doing the washing, the dishes or anything else. They could wait until after work hours. 
So the simple act of putting on my work uniform, I was treated differently and I had a different mindset myself. Now don't get me wrong, catching up with my girlfriends was wonderful. However, if I wanted to grow my business and help my clients, I needed to dedicate time to work time and to working productively. As time went on, if I didn't have appointments, I would still wear my uniform to school and then I would come home and change into my casual clothes. The mindset shift had already occurred. It was enough to get me into work mode and it saved on washing, double bonus. No doubt you've heard, fake it till you make it. I don't like that expression. If you are faking it, then you probably don't know your stuff. And if you're not being authentic, your authentic self, then what's the point? However, I do like grow into where you want to be. We've all heard stories of people that have turned up at the Mercedes or BMW or whichever brand of car you like in their gardening clothes and they've been treated quite different. Now most of these people have made it and they do have the money but it's the perception, like pretty woman. When she turned up looking not as classy as she could, then she had trouble being served. So dressing for success, dressing the way that you want to be perceived is a great tip. But remember, you've got to know your stuff to back that up. Ask yourself, do you know your stuff? Can you help your ideal customer? You may not be a brain surgeon. However, there is only one you. Marie Folio says, The world needs a special gift that only you have. How many times have you been given the same information? You see it. You hear it. Then it just takes one person to put a slightly different twist on it, to explain the information differently, and bingo. It clicks. What if you're that one person? What if you're the one that explains it so the person understands? What if you're the one that makes it click? Imposter syndrome, is it real? Yes, absolutely. Can it be cured? It sure can. And it all starts with you. And mainly, your mindset. Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School says putting out B plus work is better than no work. Don't wait until it's perfect. Just start and you may be surprised how many people you can help with your imperfect work. Denise Duffield-Thomas talks about placeholder content in her book, The Chillpreneur. She says she added placeholder content so that she could help her audience, her tribe, She always intended to go back and make it better. This placeholder content helped her make thousands of dollars and help hundreds of women. So what are you waiting for? Are you an imposter? Are you doing the wrong thing? In your heart of hearts, can you help your audience? Do you have information they need? If so, you're not an imposter. So get out there and do your stuff. Your confidence will grow, you will hone your craft and your skills will get better along the way. But you have to start. Joe Alilovich, who was one of my podcast guests on Small Business Talk, Episode 9, said, When you do a podcast, if you don't go back and listen to your first episodes and cringe, you waited too long to start. What are you waiting for? Go out and just start. You only need to be a little bit in front. I once heard that to build a course, you only needed to be one webinar, one chapter, one session in front of your students. For me personally, that would be way too stressful. However, you get the idea. If you know more than the people you were teaching, if you can help them, If you're instructing them, then you are a help to them. 
Remember, we are far harsher on ourselves than anybody else will be. So go out there and help the world. Help your community, help your ideal audience. Even things that you think are easy. Explain them to somebody else and you might just solve a huge problem for them. You are not an imposter. Be authentic, be you, and just go for it. I hope this has helped you and that you take heed and you go and do it. Next week on the Small Business Talk, I am chatting to a life coach who gives the SBT community tips on dealing with difficult customers and different communication styles. I hope you can join us then. Don't forget to subscribe to Small Business Talk podcast and head on over to smallbusinesstalk.com.au forward slash downloads for all the show notes and links to this episode. Remember, to be great, you must start. Pick one tip from today's episode, take action and implement it. Let's meet again next week at the same time and place. Until then, take action. And SBT community, enjoy your journey.